right, what's going on you guys? This is Sean here with Venture Art House. Today we've come up to the top of Baldwin Hills, Culver City Stairs. We got this great uh, overview as, as always, like the last time of all of downtown Los Angeles and everything. And I got here with me, my good friend, Joseph Argetta. Say what's up, man. How's everyone doing? It's a pleasure to be here. Hell yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming out. So today I brought Joe out. He's an amazing friend. He's a cinematographer, editor here in Los Angeles. And he has been my right hand man on so many productions. Uh, and the topic of the day that I want to talk about with you is pretty much how to get started out like in your beginning phases because out of anybody that I know in LA, your transformation from the day that we met uh, to even before that to what he knows now, not just technically wise, but business wise about this industry is just wildly different. He's learned, he's progressed so much. Uh, so let's get into that right after the intro. All right. All right. So let's get right back into it. So, dude, uh, first, I want to take it a little bit far back. Uh, what made you first pick up your camera, get a camera in general? Like, what were your goals when you first got started with all this? Let's see. So uh, the first time, I mean, I had a couple cameras before, but I want to say it started super serious, like maybe about a little over two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching a lot of car videos, and that's actually what kind of inspired me to do it. I was seeing all these different, like, it's kind of like a little future short films about just people's cars and it just inspired me i thought that it was really cool and it was kind of something i thought about doing before but i always kind of dismissed it as like mm -hmm. oh i could probably never afford to do that but then i kind of started just researching it more and i was like oh i could actually you know get a pretty cheap camera and just yeah. start out doing it and that's kind of how it started so that was about two years ago picked up my first camera i got it on a black friday deal and i picked up like a gimbal and all that Hell stuff yeah. and uh kind of just started just focusing really on cars and doing automotive work from there and um i did that for about a year and i just kept on trying to learn as much as i could just uh you know off like youtube and random tutorials right. and stuff like that like we all did yeah yeah and then uh it, w it came to a time where uh, i was kind of really uh i was at my job for like five years at that point it was right. coming up on five years what were you doing i was a uh, waiting table so okay. server and restaurant i also did like a little bit of the cooking there too and dishwashing so i was all over the place but mainly serving there and mm -hmm. i did I was go there for a long time almost five years and i i had always told myself like every year i was like i'm gonna quit this year i'm gonna quit this year i'm gonna quit this year right and i kept putting it off and then like after a year of uh kind of doing the the video stuff i was kind of like you know i think this is something that could actually like I want to do, I actually enjoy mm -hmm. it a lot. And you know, there's clearly a, a market for it. Oh yeah, and out I, here? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely out here for sure. You know, in Southern California, there's definitely a market for it. And I was like, I think this is something that I could just do and try to make a living out of, or right. you know, make a career out of. I was like, and I was like, I'm, I just have to quit this job now. Cause I, you know, I'm not terribly old. I'm 25 now. Sure. At the time I was 24, but you know, I felt like, I was getting to a point in my life where like it was critical for me to kind of make that decision now before it was too late because you know right. i don't want to end up being just putting it off even more and be like oh, i'm gonna quit i'm gonna quit and then all of a sudden i'm like 35 at some job that i hate i'm like yeah i'm gonna regret it now if i didn't do it now versus you know if i would have just stayed there and continued to do that so right i kind of just uh dropped everything and <laughs> fucking just can we curse on this yeah dude awesome <laughs> we we can curse on this show we <laughs> just this yeah i kind of just did that i <laughs> dropped everything cold turkey and just dove right in and uh it's been about a year almost a year now and uh, january 13th will be a year officially since wow I, since, I, since i quit yeah so and it's quit. it's something that like just like you said if you didn't go in for it th there's never going to be a perfect time at least in my right, experience exactly, exactly. and would you say that like going into a zone of like complete uncomfort because like what we do we don't get a consistent paycheck oh. we don't get holidays we oh. don't get paid <laughs> sick leave we don't get any of that so oh, there's no. definitely a threshold of comfort that you have to leave to be oh, doing yeah, what one, we do 100 percent, 100 percent. it was like a complete 180 in my life i was going for make i wasn't making terribly like i wasn't making a ton of money but right. i was making a lot more money than you know the most people around me my age were making mm -hmm. uh, i mean 
I was working a lot. I was working like six, seven days a week. You know, I, th I think there was a point at time at that job where I went like six months without a day off. You know, it was pretty ridiculous. Wow. But like, yeah, it's hard work. And I was making pretty decent money compared to a lot of my peers. But uh, yeah, definitely going from that to being like, you have no steady income coming in at all. It's definitely a humongous change. Oh my God. <laughs> Lifestyle yeah. flipped like that in, in an instant, man. Oh, <laughs> I feel you all the way. And would you say that like the uncomfort is only like a driver and a motivator to make you work harder yes 100 percent uh now like going back to a regular job is more scary than this now to me honestly really? I, I i'm really afraid of going back into a, a regular job and the regular workforce that terrifies me way more than doing this <laughs> why why would you say so exactly like just because i knew at a at a young age that like i never wanted to work for somebody and like have sure. a job I always wanted to own my own business and do that. And that's mm -hmm. been like one of my goals since I was probably like 10 or 11. So right. I just always knew deep down that like I would never be happy working for someone else, working, you know, for as under someone else as like a boss or something like that, that I would have. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. Kind of just, I guess. No, I mean, that's that. a, that's a miserable future, man. I mean, yeah. I appreciate you sharing how you got started. So I got yeah. some questions oh, here course, for you. So going through what you went through pretty much in the beginning uh what would be the best advice that you'd have to anybody who's just getting started who wants to start actually making money with their films what whether it be technical whether it be business wise what advice do you think is the most important for people in the uh, beginning? i would say 100 percent the most important advice is to network with people and find mm. somebody that uh you can really kind of build i guess uh if you have like a goal in mind of what you want to do, just network and link up with people who have the same kind of uh, drive and passion right. and uh, really stick close together. I mean, honestly, I'll be dead honest. If I wouldn't have met you, I don't know uh, what the much. hell or where the hell I would be at in this industry right now, man. So uh, too I appreciate much. Yeah. that. Too much, yeah. Joe reached out to me from this channel and uh, we got him on board to do BTS on one. And ever since, he's been our right-hand guy. The guy drives an hour and a half from Ventura down to LA. LA, works 18, 19 hours a day for us, sometimes for good budgets, sometimes for low budgets, and he never complains. He brings a positive attitude to the set all the time, and I, I'll stop right there before I keep rambling, but dude, like <laughs> the you, guy is great, you. and I totally agree with you. It's all about building a network yeah, yes, and uh, you know getting people together. Yeah. Um, so what are some ways that you think like people, when they're first getting started, when they kind of start to feel a little bit more confident in the, uh, in the quality of their work, can start to look for either jobs on sets or even uh, actual paying clients of their own? so how do you think like people can start to get like jobs like paying like let's say oh, you've right, reached right. a point in your work where you're like you know what i'm good i'm very comfortable with asking people to pay for the work that i produce what sort of ways do you think people can go about to get either their own paying clients for videos or start to work on sets whether it be a grip a gaffer ac anything like that right right i mean i guess there's two sort of ways you can go about it i would say if you want to get on set it would really be more so just knowing people mm -hmm. uh in the industry like i said networking is probably the uh one number one most beneficial thing that you sure. can do in this industry so if you're looking to get on like bigger budget sets or just like even small sets you know definitely it's all about who you know really so networking but as far as getting your own clients uh i would say probably the best thing to do is just go door to door send out emails We've that's usually that. what i do um call businesses uh i still look for jobs on craigslist one of my uh most um what would, you, what would you say like my most uh continuous guess, yeah continuous like, yeah clients i found on craigslist and i you know i've done a ton of work for them shout out to hadd herbie uh, yeah herbie's <laughs> a man but i would definitely recommend just you know just uh, going out there and see what seeing what's there you know in your local area sometimes you might have to go a little bit further out and uh mm -hmm. just trying to see uh I mean, if I had to put anyway, just I mean, that's still networking in a sense, yeah. you know, it's just networking. Is like everything. When we go out to the events yeah, and everything, exactly, exactly. You, know? you never know who you're going to meet out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Joe and I have gone to a numerous amount of events in L.A., whether it's a workshop on color correction, on lighting. There's always other filmmakers. So you want to, like he's saying, you know, go out there and network, but go to the place that filmmakers are going to be. So go to networking right, right, events, exactly. go to camera events, expos, stuff like that. Hell, go to a film festival or something, you know 
know, you don't go searching for the abominable snowman out in the desert. So find the right spaces. They're there. And if you're in a marketplace, and I think you can agree with me, uh, that isn't pretty much big on film. There's also the internet. Like Joe reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, I've met great people across the country on a, on a Facebook group and we've been able to link up. So there's tons of ways. It doesn't matter if you live in the middle of nowhere, like North Dakota. Sorry if you do, if that offends you, but <laughs> it's not exactly LA, New York, uh, Atlanta or anything. Uh, so just like Joe's saying, I really agree with him. Network, meet all the people you can reach out. I don't think, uh, any clients or jobs will ever just rain on your head. No, definitely not. <laughs> all right. So, um, one of the next, uh, questions that I have here is what is probably one of the biggest mistakes that you've ever made, whether it be with a client or working on another set where it just gave you one of the worst headaches possible. And what is a way that you can mitigate that in the future and hopefully teach our viewers our lesson here so they don't have to go through the same heart attack, headache, whatever you had. Because we've all been there. We've had some nightmare clients and shoots and uh, things that we could have done to prevent these situations. I know you and I together on projects that we've worked on have kind of (laughs) encountered some, uh, some certain situations. But I'm trying to think of one specifically just to one that I've encountered on my own. I don't really know. I mean, I've had pretty good clients so far. Mm, uh, I would say like, nice. <laughs> as far as a mistake goes, I could say like, uh, I, this is a personal mistake that I, like I've made. It's kind of mm-hmm. um, not having 100% direction in the type of work that you want to do. That's definitely my problem now. And I'm kind of regretting like how I started out. Cause uh, before, like when I started, I was only shooting cars and like, uh, that's all I did. And I kind of got a little bit of a reputation for being the guy that only right. shot cars now. And like, when I want to branch out and do other things, it's like, no one's really interested, you know? So right. it, it can definitely be uh, kind of harder when you want, when you want to kind of switch gears. So I would say before you kind of just dive in, like I did right. as a kind of, you know, pl- play the field, maybe get on a s- couple different uh, sets and different shoots and kind of find out just what you like and right. really pursue that. Like right now, I, I kind of have a different idea of uh, where my work wants to go. And uh, I'm trying to pursue that kind of in that direction 100%. It's definitely hard now switching gears into that. So right. I would say for sure, just have a, a clear mindset on where you want to be at in the industry and just pursue that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think, I think specializing in something that you love is definitely great, but eventually over time it can become tiresome. I mean, I do a lot of music videos. I enjoy some of them, but it's definitely not something I want to get typecasted in. I, I can't agree with you more. Right, right. I think like once you're locked into something, people know it's like, Oh, Joe is the car guy. Yeah, exactly, oh, Sean's exactly. the music video guy. And it's like, Hey, I want to do this narrative. And they're like, yeah, like well, what do you got for me? And it's like, well, I got nothing yet. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. That's my problem now is the type of work I want to do. I don't really have uh, anything in my portfolio to kind of like showcase it so it's definitely a lot harder switching gears into that now right and would you be willing to like do passion projects for free more on the lines of something that you want to do 100 percent. that's pretty much where i'm at now i'm offering work pretty much for free i'm reaching out to people that kind of like Mm. fit the criteria that i'm looking for or the style that i'm looking for i'm just offering it for free just so i can have a a, you know as part of my portfolio so yeah that's another thing is uh, don't ever um uh, discount free work especially i would say don't don't do it all the time because sure that even happened with me shooting cards like it got to a point where everybody just wanted free work because i started doing it free yeah and it got to a point where like even like when i was like oh can i get like 40 dollars for this video people were like no <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're basically and- like unwilling to pay even like the lowest dollar amount for for the work so um i would say there yeah, if that it's something bad. that can uh you that's going to be a benefit to you uh, definitely, if, if it's free, I would say still take it. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you want it to take your career somewhere for sure. Uh, what do you think like you can do possibly so that you don't get taken advantage of these people, especially while you're trying to build your portfolio? Because right, right. I think that it should always be an advantageous two-way street. One hand definitely washes the so, other. And so. you pay so much money for all the gear that oh, you own. 100%. You spend more hours than people actually realize. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's a big thing. while we encourage people to definitely uh, sometimes do work for free or discounted rate, I think you should always uh, you know, leave the president up ahead you know hey i'm gonna do this for free for you right now or hey i'm gonna do this for you know for discount for right now but in the future i would like to be able to get paid or at least maybe you can cover a hard drive or maybe right, you can cover right. my gas right yeah, over that's here another thing. that's another thing too even having them maybe just cover media like even um i shoot i'm starting to shoot a lot more film now 
on a, like a, with my photography mm. side of stuff so like i'll have them cover the cost of the film roll and the development because that adds up you know if you're shooting oh, like a yeah. roll pro 400h it's almost like 25 30 bucks at mm. least where i'm at you know now you it's gotta not, drive it's not cheap yeah you yeah. gotta drive so like maybe getting comped on gas right at least or you know covering like you said the hard drive for me sure you know, sometimes the, the roll of film the cost of the process all of that so i'd say try to at least get something out of it uh whatever you can but then again you know some there's some situations where you can get you know nothing and it's just the work yeah the work yeah show. exactly and then you know you better hope that that's like good enough ammunition that you can take on to other people yeah, exactly too. To the people that would be to be willing to pay for that type of stuff yeah 100%. now when you've been in those situations where you kind of like work for free to kind of build your portfolio did you have stuff that you were like proud of or did you have stuff where you felt like maybe you weren't exactly in control creatively uh, a little bit of both. Uh, I think that's a problem with a lot of my work now that I, when I look back, it's like, I know I can do better. And a mm -hmm. lot of the stuff was kind of like just running gun and kind of uh, unplanned, you know? Right. So, I mean, it was good experience definitely. And it taught me a lot, but, uh, it's, I don't think it's anything now that I would like pitch to somebody trying to right. be like a client. Right. I think that's a problem now. So yeah, definitely. So I would say that's uh, another thing is like, um, I would say it encouraged be encouraged people to be really like intentional with what they're doing, right? Uh, not to just be so like blank minded going into it, right? And um, you know sometimes you always can't be like uh, if you're shooting like like you said I was doing BTS pictures. It's not like something sure. you can take time to like compose an yeah, image, compose like, you, and you, tell you a take story. The image and like you get what you get, and you you, know, you try. You're, you're, that's another you know you're under pressure to get the best image that you can with what you have. So sometimes. Sure you're stuck in positions like that but i would say definitely if you can try to be like as intentional and uh thought out as you can with your work because usually it's going to yield better quality results yeah and that shows when you yeah. when you don't do the pre-production at all 100%, 100%. And, you know what your story is because we've gone on just point and shoot shoots all the time for yeah. clients where it's just been like this random uh cluster fuck and you're like hey what what are we <laughs> shooting and we've totally had those clients yeah, you know right. we, we don't have to say names so. but we've had those yeah, clients yeah, definitely so so those things can definitely happen to you i mean I, I definitely think when you're first getting started out learn how to like use your camera and everything but also learn how to plan you know plan will always give you success in the end nothing will always go to plan no, you know that no, you know that 100 <laughs> percent. pretty much i'd say so far from doing this professionally for a little while plan on things never going to plan uh always, and if you set yourself always. up that way and you have plan b's and options to mitigate those failures that'll right. help you a lot more in the end than saying like oh what uh what do we do now <laughs> exactly you know exactly, you've exactly. totally been at that point um what are some other things like let's get more maybe like on the uh the whole technical side of things that you think are probably more important where you think most kids today are paying attention to more that they really shouldn't <laughs> oh man i would say um I'd say one thing if you're starting out is um, make if you already have a camera or you're thinking about getting a camera mm -hmm. like if you already have a camera make use of what you have first before you know you go out and dump money into all this gear because I've, I've, I'm guilty of that I've gone out and dumped a ton of money thousands of dollars into gear that like I honestly ended up not really even using or I didn't use it as much as mm -hmm. I thought so if you're kind of in a like you know what type of work you're doing kind of look at i would say look at what other people other professionals don't don't listen to your youtuber people <laughs> whatever they suggest you need but like right. what actual professionals are using on set for these types of things and like like with even with my camera right now it's pretty budget built but like uh, you know it can get the job done yeah you know, i would say uh if you can like don't discredit or discount uh, a lot of like cheaper stuff to like amazon and ebay gear i mean certain stuff i w would definitely stay sure. away, away from like glass and filters but like like the matte box i have on my camera right now it's like mm. it's 15 bucks and it does a great job my monitor is 100 bucks and it's better than uh some name brand ones mm. <laughs> <laughs> i think everybody knows that but i would say yeah yeah just um make the do with what you have and just kind of uh take your time don't don't jump too too uh, hard onto the gear train it's really not about that and uh shoot more handheld yeah <laughs> i like that i like the little yeah, and right a there. tripod i'd say if, if you are gonna buy a gear build up a, a good handheld rig and get a tripod 
Yeah. That's all you need to start. I'm with you. I'm with him all the way. Uh, I love the organic look of handheld. Uh, so the last question I have just to wrap this whole thing up are what are some of the best ways that you can learn if you if you can't afford to go to film school or you just don't want to? Uh, maybe some people specifically that uh, have taught you a lot, whether it be on the internet or certain blogs, websites. Like how, how did you learn most of what you know and what do you recommend? See, uh, most of what I learned was, I mean, most of it was just self-taught, kind of going out there and making a lot of mistakes and just mm. seeing like this looks good this looks bad so uh don't be afraid just to go out and shoot whatever's around you you know i, I still to this day you know i just shoot like street stuff whatever's around right. me you know and, and of course it's not stuff that's gonna be like uh have any sort of context to it but as as far as just getting like the technical side of things down just go out there and shoot and see what looks good maybe if you have a friends shoot your friends make you a little short film you know something yeah. like that short narrative pieces or you know even just the, how to compose a good shot you know all the technical side yeah just uh use whatever's around you that's that's the that's the best the best thing you can do is uh what you're surrounded with yeah i'm a very hands-on guy so doing that especially when i got started to know like hey what how does the shutter speed work hey how should i expose this log exactly, image and exactly. hey how do we light a car and pretty much every failure is probably the greatest lesson oh you yeah 100 uh, yeah we had a show to, we had a shoot together joe and i and we were trying to light a car it was my first time and i was trying every which way and the client was kind of starting to see like uh what's going on here <laughs> and i was so nervous but after that shoot I learned okay here's 500 ways not to light a car exactly. and after that exactly. I learned from my lesson um, along with that what uh, sort of pages blogs videos would you say that are your favorite to learn from even till today that you would right, recommend right. let's see uh, what's it let's see. if you're looking more for just like a uh, filmmaking stuff um, damn what's the name of that one has the, the yellow text yellow text uh oh cook optics yeah channel. cook optics yeah channel, that one, that they one. Got the cook great optics channel stuff. has a lot of good information on there um let's see who else is good I'm trying to think of like good youtubers that actually have good information mm. of course venture art house oh thank you <laughs> thank you very much yeah uh, uh wandering dp is yeah, wandering really DP good. Is good wandering dp yeah. is good um damn i can't think of any off the top of my head Oh, you're all good. I mean, there's so, there's so many. I mean, I I think you just can't think of some off the top of my head, but I know you've sent me videos right, from Shutterstock right. tutorials. I really love their sure stuff. They have good. great stuff, whether it's on Post and Premiere and Resolve, whether it's on DIY lighting. Uh, I think Film Riot is a great place oh, yeah, as well. Film Riot's good. They've Film got a good. lot of good yeah, stuff yeah, on there. So. Uh, man, the list goes on and on. Uh, Buff Nerds has got some good stuff, especially for business and the ugly do's and don'ts behind yeah, everything true. that goes on uh, as well. I'm sure there's some other guys off there, but I, I can't think off the top of my head. Um, right. I'd also recommend the uh, Cinematographer's Magazine. A lot of great information in there. Uh, definitely still read paper, copy things. Not everything has to be on the internet or video form. Right, right. That's yeah. true. That's true. So. But yeah, man, I mean, the sun is going down behind us. I'm sure we're pretty much almost darkly exposed Probably. at this point. <laughs> uh, but dude, I just want to thank you oh, so yeah, much for coming out, thanks coming all the way up here. Appreciate you. Uh, this has been Joseph Argetta here. Check him out on Instagram. Check out his YouTube as well. He's got a lot of great advice and content out there. And 2020 is going to look pretty good for him. He's getting into yeah, more okay. of what he wants to do. Uh, this is Sean for Venture Art House. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Until the next time. Thank you.